Hello, I'm Ken Burrell from Pragmatic PMO. This is one of a series of videos expanding on the Success Stories Shared initiative that was started in South Africa by Linky van der Merwe of Virtual Project Consulting and Louise Worsley of PyCubed, and which has their enthusiastic support. Aldous Huxley said that men do not learn very much from the lessons of history is the most important of all the lessons of history. Project management research has shown that project managers prefer to learn by face-to-face -face interaction rather than by searching through lessons learned databases. I think that project managers can learn a lot from each other's success stories and also from sharing their scars. So as part of my campaign for real project managers, on your behalf, I'm talking to some real project managers I've had the pleasure of working alongside so that you can benefit from their experience. Today, I'm delighted to have with me Martin Dowsett, who's going to share some of his experiences with us. Hello, Martin. Um, I'd like you to start, if you can, by introducing yourself and giving us a flavour of your background and how you got into project management. My career started off in architecture been way back in 1979, so I spent uh, 15 to 20 years in architecture interior design as a technician and then progressed into internal change management with clients in the mid-90s when computers started coming out. Been doing projects since 98 when I joined AB and AMRO uh, on their main fit out of 250 Bishopsgate. So migrated into project management quite naturally um, via trading floors getting into main fit out and construction. Now working on major fit outs for clients uh, doing internal um, fit out and design change. Currently working for ASOS on a 30 million pound fit out of their headquarters and just completed their customer care centre in Watford. Uh, previous experiences working for Amel Insurance, moving in them into the Lednal building in the city, mm -hmm. and prior to that, uh, Alzheimer's as a charity, moving from St Catherine's Dock into Fenchurch Street, which was a three million pound project. Can you give us an example of um, some experience from a project that was particularly complex or challenging, or something that went wrong? What you learned from it? Talking about the Alzheimer's project, they were in an existing building, in St Catherine's Dock. Uh, they, their lease was expiring and they had to move to a new building, which was Fenchurch Street. I come on board the project um, probably halfway through, to, just before the tender stage, as a lead project manager. Uh, one of the, the current issues for them was their budget. They had, they had a strict £3 million budget for the, everything on the fit out and move. Uh, they, when I come on board, they were th circa 400000 over budget. Uh, one of the issues was that when they prepared the budget that they had uh, costed it on a square foot basis using um, a comparison um, cost per square foot but that was a, a net price not including VAT and charities don't charge VAT so immediately their budget was blown right. from the start. My action on that was to gather together the professional team and lead designer and go through the design and specification of the fit out to identify savings and value engineering throughout the whole job. So how did you do that? It, it was a root and branch detailed examination of the drawings, the specification and the actual design of the fit out. Okay, so based on that experience, what would you recommend that others do in your position? The experience that I gather th from that is that on, a, on the initial project phase uh, or startup, the, the professional or lead designer um, gives you a vision, but there's no indication of value or cost to that vision, and that only comes out. You know, once you get into the tender stage mm -hmm. and then the surprises come out on that. Um, what I'd recommend is putting a standard to the design, so a, a gold, a silver, a bronze standard. That Alzheimer's, I, I, I would say we, we were more of the tin standard, so a very low spec, you know, as you would uh, represent with the charity. Is that something that you could transfer to other projects, not just construction? Probably to most projects, yes. Um, to give the professional team a clear understanding of what the expectations are for the client or the organisation, especially on the cost basis. So it sounds like what you're doing there is giving the client options so that they can choose according to their budget and their situation. Um, what we also done, we also created strap lines 
uh, for the professional team, a clear understanding of where the charity sits within uh, their budget. So you can, you, well, you have the, the the cost model of the gold, silver, bronze, mm -hmm. but also we gave them that, that we wanted the design to be like for like, charity appropriate, and no exposés by the Daily Mail. So we didn't want a uh, a whistleblower coming along telling the Daily Mail that we'd installed a £600 light fitting which would be bad reputation for their donations. So it sounds to me those strap lines are like guiding principles so that you can uh, direct the way that the project's going. Guiding rules and parameters that they can focus on. Okay, so that was a scar, something that, something that went wrong and that you turned around. Um, how about success stories? <coughs> do you have any um, things that you do on most projects um, that, that you believe are key to success and that you'd recommend other people do? So within the construction fit-out world, working with clients, the professional team, I, I think they focus on the, the end state of the project, i.e. the fit-out is complete, client moves in. For the client, there's a lot of preparation work to do for once that that floor goes is mobilized. So preparation in getting the facilities correct, the space correct, uh, making sure that the the floor is ready for operational use for the for the uh, staff and departments moving in. What I normally do on that is is prepare and and mobilization planning. I use an aid memoir to go through a list of key actions and, and protocols that you need to uh, set up before you move in. Uh, this normally then triggers off mini projects within the, the internal project team uh, to prepare for our day one move in. So I think what you're saying is that you don't just want to focus on the main deliverable, but you also need to make sure that all the services and support around it is set up and ready to go. Yeah, the focus of the construction project team is the end state of the practical completion the handover that building then has to function for the client for the next 15 to 20 years martin thanks for sharing your experiences with us so today we heard from martin about how he's recovered from a situation went, that went wrong and also about things that he does that help things to work well anton chekhov said knowledge is of no value unless you put it into practice I believe the value of learning comes not just from documenting the past, but from changing what we do in the future. So my challenge to you is this, what can you learn from this? What will you do differently in your projects as a result of Martin's experiences? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video and found it stimulating, please leave a comment or a like or both, or share it with others on social media. If you think these videos are useful and interesting, let me know and I'll make more of them. And if you want to appear in one of them, let me know. For other videos on project management topics, take a look at my video channel. For articles on project management and PMO topics, visit my website, pragmaticpmo.com, or follow me on Twitter, at pragmaticpmo. To connect with me more personally, search LinkedIn for Ken Burrell Pragmatic PMO. In the meantime, until the next time, thanks for watching.